In his work, The Pasteurization of France, Latour draws a sustained analogy with Tolstoy's War and Peace, portraying warlords and scientists as confused figures. In his laboratory life, laboratory is depicted as a realm of invention where reality is shaped. For Pasteurians, it played a pivotal role in transforming medicine and society through the formation of alliances with various groups, including hygienists. At times, the laboratory shifted to the field as seen in the vaccination demonstration. Pasteur emerged as a new figurehead, defining microbes as instruments of persuasion in the advancement of the new science. Latour contends that the sociology of science fell short in providing a comprehensive political or social explanation of pasteurism, as it failed to acknowledge the microbe as an active force reshaping society without adhering to social norms. To regain credibility, sociology must redefine itself as the study of associations. The traditional Durkheimian notion of science, of social facts, should be relinquished as the world's composition and power dynamics are undergoing a transformation with new players and sources of influence. Success is now determined by the ability to forge influential alliances for achieving closure. In the case of Pasteurians, this led to new avenues of research such as ophthalmia treatment and a re-evaluation of epidemiological issues including advances in hygiene practices like surgery. While it may be unsettling for strict objectivists, science continues to progress even if its achievements are now explained in terms of belief and exerted force. Interestingly, the hygienists who had initially benefited from their alliance with the Pasteurians eventually become absorbed into bureaucratic structures while physicians took over their domain. With the exception of army doctors who witnessed more casualties from microbes than from human force, the medical profession resisted the influence of pasteurism. However, when doctors realized that incorporating preventative medicine and reporting cases of contagious diseases to authorities did not breach the doctrine of medical and confidentiality, and that bacteriology could be safely integrated into clinical practice, they gained newfound authority. Their scope of practice expanded from individual patients to encompass the entire citizenry. What became of the once dominant posterians? Others assumed their mantle of influence while they remained in their laboratories delving into fields like immunology and biochemistry. However, they failed to introduce a new concept that would empower them to reshape society. It was not until they turned their attention to the colonial empire that Pasteurian biologists found a new arena for their endeavors. Here, in the realm of tropical medicine, they could reenact the old narrative in a fresh context and play a crucial political military role in facilitating European expansion into Africa. The narrative concludes on a note of imperialistic triumph over colonial microorganisms with Pasteurians merging real empire building with scientific endeavors in the service of the mission civil satiris. Having deconstructed the previous social framework, Latour proceeds to dismantle the theoretical underpinnings of the traditional belief system. He challenges our faith in modernity, logic, the power of reason, and the distinction between belief and knowledge, among other fundamental tenets. This constitutes the second part of the book titled Passages in French and Irreductions in English. Even if one doesn't adhere to any of the toppled ideals, which have been overthrown many times in recent years, Latou's axiomatic performance is both dazzling and pertinent to the broader scope of his extensive undertaking. He rightly resists compartmentalizing philosophy, sociology and the history of science into their conventional silos. However, the text separates categories into an empirical section and a theoretical section rather than uniting them.